Okay, so this is the all new Xiaomi 14 Pro that comes with Xiaomi's latest Hyper OS. I have been testing it for the past one week, so let's see what's new and what's changed from the not so loved MIUI. Let's start. Xiaomi says they have been developing this operating system from the ground up for the past six years. Um, Hyper OS is still based on Android, obviously, but it's supposed to be this all for one type of thing that will not only power Xiaomi smartphones moving forward, but also all kinds of other devices like smartwatches, televisions, and even cars eventually. Okay, so the biggest and the most in your face feature in Xiaomi's Hyper OS is definitely lock screen customization. Now, when you long press on the lock screen, you can customize the lock screen just like Apple. Now, some might say this is copied, but I don't want to be very harsh, so let's just say that it's a little inspired. Lock screen customization is actually a part of the Android 14 experience itself, but the way Xiaomi has done it is quite nice. There are these different styles to play around here, all with different characters and aesthetics, and this is easily the most fun I've had out of personalizing any of my phone's lock screens on Android, so that's a thumbs up for me. I can make it as pretty, as bold, or as utilitarian as I'd like with a bunch of widgets. Xiaomi's selection of fonts is also really something, and of course, Hyper OS lets me customize their fonts, their colors, apply filters, and everything as well. There's even the option to add depth effect to the wallpaper like on the iPhone, and it works pretty well. And the best part about all of this is that no matter how I end up customizing my lock screen, it plays nice with the always-on display as well. Multitasking has also gotten a lot simpler on HyperOS. Things like floating window and split-screen mode work just fine on MIUI, but Xiaomi has managed to make it just a little more intuitive. As you can see, there's now this indicator at the top when I'm in the multi-window mode and I can switch the layout of the app, open it in a floating window, full-screen mode, or simply close it with just one click. There's even a nice pop-up to directly launch an app in split-screen view from the sidebar, so I am really liking this uh, mix of style and productivity on HyperOS so far. And this multitasking thing, I can see it being especially useful in tablets and foldables. Another neat little feature is how HyperOS lets me group icons by color for easier access besides all the usual categories. I know this does not sound as exciting as the ones that I've discussed before, but it's one of those things where I'm like, Oh, okay, that's nice. Why doesn't my phone do that? HyperOS shakes things up a little in the control panel as well. First off, there's now a media player tile right there on the control center. Uh, HyperOS gets rid of the icon labels in the control center too, while long pressing certain shortcuts like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth open up a pop-up menu now just like on iOS. I must admit though, I'm not the biggest fan of this change. Uh, looks a little too uninventive for my taste. Uh, the one silver lining here is that Xiaomi finally lets me access the settings shortcut when the phone is in landscape orientation, which always was one of the weirdest restrictions in MIUI. You might also have noticed the Mi Smart Hub thing too, right? This is essentially a central station where you'll be able to monitor and control all of your Xiaomi devices like Samsung SmartThings and Google Smart Home, and it was actually introduced last year with MIUI 13. But while this guy never made its way outside of China then, I am quite hopeful HyperOS will make that happen since it has been specifically designed with cross-device intelligent connectivity in mind. And this feels like a pretty essential part of that experience. In fact, there's a whole section inside the settings called interconnectivity where I can enable and disable different cross-device capabilities like screen mirroring, app continuity, and more. Although I can't show you how well either of them works right now since I don't have a Xiaomi tablet or a Xiaomi laptop running on Hyper OS with me. All right, next up, like all the other companies, Xiaomi has also jumped in on the AI bandwagon with Hyper OS. It's supposed to be able to do all sorts of things like automatically turn on smart lights when you enter the room, summarize articles, generate real-time subtitles, and more. Um, while most of them are not available right now, I can show you its AI-based image editing tool that lets me select a subject by long pressing it and then copy it, send it to others, or even edit the background. Other than this, there are a bunch of other stuff it can do like erase unwanted objects, edit the sky, or apply bokeh effects to your photos. Um, now, again, these are not features we haven't seen before, but they are now available on HyperOS 2 and I will not complain about that.
And if you like having a ton of widgets on your phone's home screen, then I am pretty sure you're going to love what HyperOS has in store for you. Xiaomi has redesigned most widgets for the system apps with a bold look and I absolutely love it. There are also a bunch of really pretty looking widgets that you've got to download separately. The camera app sees a nice little helpful refresh as well. Uh, so now instead of having to awkwardly reach to the top of the screen to access different camera settings, I can simply swipe down. I know some high and Xiaomi phones running on MIUI 14 could already do this, but HyperOS might bring it in smartphones of all price brackets. By the way, here are the list of devices that will receive HyperOS in the first quarter of 2024. Besides all of these, HyperOS brings a lot of little visual tweaks too. And the first thing I noticed is how the system app icons have a more striking look with a better sense of depth. Now, the notification hub looks a lot cleaner and more organized too, whereas there's this dynamic island-like pop-up every time I plug it in to charge, adjust ringer modes, or switch on to do not disturb. Looks pretty nice, I must admit. A lot of the system apps and UI elements also have been cleaned up to make them feel more modern and easy to use, including calculator, clock, file manager, gallery, settings, and weather. On top of all this, you might have noticed how system animations on HyperOS are also way smoother, right? Uh, be it when unlocking the screen or launching an app or something, it just feels more polished than what I'm used to on MIUI. Maybe that's because I'm testing it on Xiaomi's latest flagship phone with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, but things do look rather promising here. Okay, that was all for my one week experience with the all new Xiaomi Hyper OS. And based on everything I've seen so far, I definitely think it has what it takes to replace MIUI with a more reliable and a more intuitive software experience. Apart from all the cool new features and visual changes, I also want Hyper OS to be free from all the common MIUI complaints though, like buggy and untimely updates, poor resource management, etc. Only time will tell exactly how that will pan out. So all I can do at this moment is sit back and stay optimistic. So everybody, that was all for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, a subscription to the channel would be great as well. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.